How much do you know about this place? If you're watching this presentation, it's incredibly likely that you have some kind of connection to Quest University Canada, a post-secondary institution located on the unceded ancestral territory of the Squamish Nation in Squamish, BC. As a student, a faculty or staff member, or someone maybe one or two steps removed from these positions, we all probably have somewhat of a common understanding of the basics. Buzzwords like interdisciplinary, mountains, and critical thinking may come to mind. But we each definitely have our own nuances in our understandings of the history and current state of Quest. For me, Quest is the university where I received my undergraduate education. It's the school that forced me to do science classes and let me live five seconds away from all of my friends for four years. Coming in, I understood that it had had some financial difficulties in the past, and that there was a bit of a risk in choosing to invest my time and money in this institution instead of another. Obviously, at that time, there was also so much about the school that I didn't know. And even after being approximately 99% done with my degree, I'm aware that there are boxes, literal boxes stored away in a room, of things that I don't know about the school. Like any, this institution has a vast, complexly woven history of activity that can't just be plucked from the brain of someone who's been around for a while. So, beyond each of our personal understandings of Quest, how do institutions like this one remember? How do they regulate and record? How are they kept accountable, and where can one go if they want to learn a little bit more about said institution? Hi, my name is Mariana Chicha, and I'm excited to share with you the work of my Keystone project, titled Who Will Remember If We Don't? Institutional Memory and the Small University Archive, which deals with the storage and protection of Quest University Canada's history. So to get started, let's bring back those boxes of information that I mentioned. How do institutions remember? Well, usually, they use archives. In the public consciousness, archives tend to conjure images of dusty old rooms, rife with ancient records that are too fragile to touch, when in reality, many forms of archival institution, commonplace today, have been around for less than 100 years. In the early 20th century, university archives were just starting to take shape, and information professionals, like librarians, were beginning to argue for the importance of preserving institutional history. At this time, the creation and bolstering of these early university archives was often spurred on by upcoming anniversaries in the university's history, as this presented the opportunity for marketing the archival collection, which could generate interest amongst the public or re-engage current community members and alumni in a sense of school pride. Though these archival collections provided opportunities for funding and community engagement, the role of archives in general is much more crucial to the function of equitable, evidence-based societies than the above reason may lead one to believe. At their core, archival institutions aim to preserve documentary evidence of the community that they serve, which can be defined as the small portion of all information, communications, ideas, and opinions that people or organizations create and receive as part of their daily life and work that are captured in recorded form and kept because they have some value beyond the moment of creation. I use this broad definition of documentary evidence as it highlights the vast range in both form and content that records may take, depending on what community or institution they serve, but also because it deals with the subjectivity of archives and the value-based judgments that are central to their function. Because archives are human-created and facilitated, and concerned with this subjective question of value, it is then necessarily always true that archives are influenced by the socio-political context of their time and cannot be regarded as neutral sources of information, as much as this may be their mainstream representation. Archives, then, are a place where meaning is not only found, but created. By collecting, processing, and preserving documentary evidence, archivists have a significant amount of power in shaping the story that an archive tells, through their inclusion, exclusion, and prioritization of certain records. But they are also simultaneously giving back a significant amount of power to the community that they serve, who may now access evidence and investigate histories relevant to their lives and activities. This subjectivity must be kept in mind when dealing in any way with archives. So now, what about Quest? When Quest was founded in 2007, the university did not have any form of an archive. Seeing this, some library staff members began to collect Quest ephemera in order to document whatever they could of the university's beginnings. 
A few years after that, a considerable donation was made by Dr. David Strangway, who was the founder of Quest University and a geologist on the NASA Apollo missions. This formed the main bulk of materials in the archival collection. In 2015, Morgan Trine, a Quest student at the time, wrote a proposal for a permanent Quest archive to be established and housed in the library building, but nothing long-lasting ever came of it. During this time, the Strangway collection, full of valuable, vulnerable materials, including NASA reports and photographs, was being stored in the Quest Utilidor, unprotected. With no designated archival space on campus, the collection was unable to be moved into a safe, lockable, weather-controlled room, despite many library department-driven efforts. The materials were consequently broken into and records were stolen. In 2017, there was an executive decision to weed through the materials, and during this process, unrecorded parts of the collection were lost. Because of this event, the full extent of the Strangway donation is unknown, as the collection was so large that it had not yet been able to be catalogued. Dr. Jamie Kemp, an arts and humanities tutor at Quest, began to use parts of the Strangway collection in her museum studies courses, which is where former Quest student Taya Satterdahl and classmates started to work on the processing of the Strangway collection. During the summer and fall semesters of 2019, library staff members Satterdahl and Kemp worked on processing and accessioning this collection, finding a space for the Quest archive, and establishing it as an archive. A room in the academic building was temporarily designated for archival use, and an archive committee composed of library staff and student volunteers was established and now holds regular meetings. The Strangway Collection, Quest planning documents that include original building blueprints, and various ephemera are now stored in the archive room and are monitored by the archive committee. This all forms the current version of Quest's archive, unofficially titled the David Strangway Memorial Archive. Though individual students, staff, and faculty members have shown interest and ambition in the preservation of Quest's institutional history over the years, these plans have not always been supported by the executive team, greatly complicating the security and stability of the projects. As a small, burgeoning university facing great complications trying to get the school up and running, I can imagine that the establishment of an archive did not appear to be top priority. This remains true today, as Quest's financial struggles impede upon the other important but less pressing aspects of institutional development. So, with still so many challenges ahead for Quest to face, why now should we prioritize the establishment of an archive? I argue that times like these, of conflict, misfortune, and uncertainty, are when an institutional archive is of most use. Asking why an archive is important is akin to asking why history is important. In order to not only plan for our future, but to understand our present, we must be able to look back from where we came. Roses, thorns, and all. How and why did Quest as an institution become what we see here today? Don't we want to preserve the building blocks necessary to interrogate this question? The David Strangway Memorial Archive is uniquely situated as a hybrid archive that preserves both special collections and research materials for use by members of the university community, as well as records of university history. This latter role plays an important part in preserving institutional history and memory, which is all of the knowledge stored through conventional and unconventional methods in an institution. This includes all of the things that you thought of when I asked what you knew about this place. Organizations commonly keep track of their institutional knowledge and history for a multitude of reasons, ranging from bureaucratic to sentimental, which, consciously or not, all serve to build institutional memory. The preservation of this history has both intrinsic and practical value. In essence, it allows the institution to know about itself and to learn from itself. Because different bodies and departments are moving through the organization, newcomers are not automatically equipped with an understanding of the institution's past, and so this memory must be preserved so that it can be transferred. This practice of preservation and curation can also be interpreted as a practice of care. If Quest does not care enough to protect and preserve its own legacy, who else will, and why should they? I do not mean to suggest archival practice in order to sanitize and blindly celebrate the history of Quest. As previously mentioned, many archives aim to garner school pride by presenting a glossy, sentimental version of institutional history in order to, among other things, secure donations. I do not hope for the Quest archive to reflect this vision, as I believe that at their best, archives reflect the messy complexity of their housing institutions. 
Because the history of Quest University has not been entirely positive, has anyone's? I do not suggest to preserve a version of that history in which challenges, tensions, and disagreements are smoothed over and the institution is venerated without a critical eye. It is here where the preservation of institutional memory and history become most important, and where the subjectivity of the archivist and their decision-making process comes most into question. Quest's institutional history should be preserved so that current and future generations of community members can not only get a glimpse into the experience of campus's past, but also so that they can access the records necessary to interrogate important questions about our university. Wasn't that always Quest's vision, anyways? In an effort to contribute to and protect the independent archival initiatives at Quest, my keystone provides a body of archival policies for the David Strangway Memorial Archive that outline procedure related to acquisitions, reference, dissolution, and more standard archival activity. By writing into policy the structures, guidelines, wants, and needs of the Quest Archive, my keystone provides the foundational documents required for the protection and progression of the Quest Archive. If the institution of Quest is to change from what we see today, which is quite likely, how are we to preserve the history of Quest's first 13 years without a proper and protected archive? And again, when the university faces changes in the future, as it inevitably will, how will records of structures past be kept without archival procedures and an archival team to do the work? Especially because so much of work at Quest is done voluntarily by students, staff, and faculty alike. Quest's archival structure needs to be built into something larger than an individual's project so that we may accomplish the important task of systematically documenting the school's history. In order for proper preservation of our history to happen, we need to protect, legitimize, and officialize the Quest archive. With only scattered collection unsupported by policy, procedure, and the institution at large, it is immeasurable how much will be lost. Thank you.